All right, that's it. We just ordered 250 Norton grapevine cuttings. We are starting a vineyard. Okay, what you just saw was about six months of work and I am standing in front of our new vineyard. This is where all of our grapes are gonna be planted and I am so excited to share this with you guys and to take you along for some of the planting that we're gonna be doing today. Welcome back to the homestead, everybody. Like I said, I'm standing in the vineyard here on our north side of the property and we have all of our lines marked out. We did six months of work to make this happen. Thanks to my brother, my sister-in-law and everybody that helped get this done. It was a lot of work, but here we are six months later. We have this area of the property cleared. We took down about seven trees, probably a 50 year old walnut, big tall locust trees, a beautiful red bud and another walnut up on the top side of the property over here. I hate taking down trees, but this was a good reason to take down these trees. So let me just quickly walk you through our setup. Like I said, we're on the north side of the property, so we have a north-south facing slope here, which is perfect for grapes. Our sun goes across the vineyard like this, which is ideal. So we decided to go with uh, an eight-foot spacing in between rows. So each row has eight feet in between. 
and then each plant has six feet in between. So we're gonna be training our vines to grow out three feet on each side. We are new to this. We don't exactly know what we're doing. Like a lot of the stuff that we do here on the homestead, we are learning, experiencing, growing as we go. And so this is uh, this has a steep learning curve for anyone that has delved into uh, growing wine grapes or starting their own vineyard. There's a steep learning curve when it comes to basically everything. Uh, this is one of the easier processes is planting but when you get down the road so far as pruning and all of that man it, it just gets hard so we've been doing a lot of research and the exciting thing is we're going to take you along for the process we're going to show you everything that we've encountered and if you want to try this at home with a smaller setup or a bigger setup whatever it is uh, we encourage you to this has been super fun and we're excited to get deeper into it so like i said we have eight foot in between rows and that spacing is basically just for our equipment we have our little small lawnmower our uh our golf cart back here and maybe the truck we did it wide enough to be able to fit the truck in i doubt we'll ever take the truck through the vineyard um, but that's the spacing we chose for that reason and then six feet in between each plant because that's the most typical spacing for grapes and like i said we're going to be training our arms out three feet on each side and then we're going to have all the leaf wall go we'll get into all those details on later videos but i wanted to just give you a quick rundown of what's going on on this side of the property obviously as you can see we've already planted two rows there's 18 plants in each row we wanted to get our feet wet before we took you along and so we kind of know the process now today we're going to be planting hopefully two more three rows i don't know we'll figure it out it's a lot of work because at the top part of our hill we have a lot of rocks so um, i have to beat those rocks with a rock bar break them up pull them out of the ground and then put new soil back in first thing i wanted to show you is our, our cuttings so we're growing a variety of grapes called norton so a couple really cool things about the norton grape variety is that it originated in richmond virginia which is where me and my wife are both from it is considered America's oldest grape. Eventually, it migrated out to the Midwest and it became Missouri's state grape, which obviously now we live in Kansas City, Missouri. So we, were, we came from Richmond, Virginia. We migrated out to Kansas City, Missouri, and so did the grape. So like all perfect stories, there's the background. Anyway, they're a great variety for this area, for this zone, uh, for this growing zone. So as you can see, these are cuttings. We're not growing from root. And that was because vines are really hard to find, especially this variety. We couldn't find rooted Norton vines anywhere. So we found a guy on eBay. He's from Virginia and we ordered a couple bundles from him. So we have about just over 250 cuttings here that we're going to be planting and let me pull one out and show you. So this is it right here. This is the cutting, super simple. All they do at the end of the season is when they're trimming, pruning back the vines, they take these cuttings and you can replant them just like a lot of other plants out there. All we're doing today is we take, this is, a, this is kind of a node area right here, and we're gonna dip it, the bottom portion, into rooting hormone. And we're using Hormex. And actually Hormex, I'll leave a link in the description below if you're planting your own grapes. They make a number eight. They actually do it on a uh, special formulas for different plants. The number eight is for uh, harder to root woody plants, uh, which we're dealing with grapes obviously. So this is the one that we ordered. I have all of my cuttings in some water here. We're kind of waking them up a little bit. They've been in the fridge for the past, I don't know, two weeks, something like that. And so we're waking them up. They actually have, when they came, they, the guy waxed the top to just to keep the moisture in the, uh, in the cutting here. So we're gonna be dipping our cutting in the rooting hormone, and then we're gonna be placing it in the ground. We have some compost mix. It's the same stuff that we're using in our raised beds, just with a little bit more compost. And we're mixing 50-50 compost to our native soil and then all we're doing is just planting this directly into the ground. So planting directly into the soil with a cutting, it, we're, we're just trying it out. We've seen some YouTube videos, some vineyards that do it every single year. They take their cuttings, they soak them overnight, and they immediately plant them the next day. And so we're going to be trying it. Ready? Yeah, I was, I was doing cheese. All right, you want to do it? Yeah. All right, so, so Walker's going to help us out. We're going to plant our first plant. Careful, don't let it t t take take you. You got it? Yeah. All right, now pull it out. Deep. See that? How easy that is. Super easy. So we're doing about eight to 10 inch holes. I'm digging them a little bit deeper 
so that when the roots start to come out, they have a lot of loose soil to go down into. And then I'm back filling with that loose soil. So we'll set this off to the side and then we'll go get our compost. All right, now that we got our hole dug, we take our improved soil. And I'm just, I just pop it right there next to the hole. All right, so we got our improved soil. I already backfilled. We take our cutting, get some of that water off of it. Just dip it in the, dip the bottom portion into the rooting hormone, like that. And simple, all you do, stick it into the hole and back fill around it. I try to line mine up real close to my marker line here because this is where all of our trellising is going to go. Try to pack it around nice and good because we don't have any roots on there yet. Then take your blue X grow tube, put it over the top, shove your stake down in the ground. And that's basically it. There's not much else to it. I do do another tie up here because the wind seems to take these grow tubes. You also mound up about three inches of soil around the bottom of your grow tube. Again, so that the wind doesn't take your grow tube. But before we finalize this one, we're gonna water it in real good. Whenever you're planting cuttings, all the stress that they go through, um, and also the process of waking them up, we're gonna water them heavy in about, I don't know, half a gallon on each plant. So as I go down the row, I'm gonna be watering in this plant and then I'll go down the line. Hey. All right, so that's it. Super simple, not a whole lot to it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go down this run and plant all of these uh, grapes in. We have a storm coming. I can feel it in the air and I can see it in the clouds. Uh, so we wanna get as many planted today as we can. We're in early April and this is the time that you plant grapes. And so we wanna make sure that we're getting all of these in in a decent amount of time. We did, like I said before, we did these two rows yesterday. I'm suspecting that I'll be able to get two more rows in today, but we still got, you know, I think we have 14 or 18 rows here. I'll have to count. Uh, 250 grape plants here. So we got a lot of work to do. So I'm gonna keep going down this row and get these cuttings in. You know, one thing I would highly recommend if you're planning on planting your own grapes is to plant heritage grapes. So plant grapes that are hardy to your area, that are, you know, natively, that were natively found in your area or grown in your area, uh, that do well in your growing zone. Don't try to grow exotic grapes just because that's the variety that you like. Even with the grapes that we have planted over here that we planted, you know, a number probably two years ago now, they're not very vigorous. That's the one thing I would recommend. Plant grapes that are native to your area, there, that are heritage grapes. You can find exactly what those are just by typing in your state or your location and saying heritage grapes or, you know, good growing grapes for my zone or whatever it is. Uh, that's how we stumbled upon the Norton variety. Some of these cuttings you gotta look at pretty good because you wanna make sure your buds are pointing up that you're, you're, you're planting your plant the right way and not upside down, which you can do. Um, it helps because the guy that I bought these from, they, they wax the tops to keep the moisture in, so it kind of gives me a heads up, but people make mistakes and it looks like they wax some bottoms and uh, they weren't oriented the right way. So you gotta kinda, 
inspect it a little bit before you put it in the ground. Make sure you're planting your, your one node in the ground. Um, and then make sure you have your second node a decent ways off the soil, maybe like an inch or uh, two inches off the soil base. And that's it. All right, so it's super windy outside, so I'm gonna show y'all how to do the Blue X uh, grow tubes in here. I got Isaiah helping me put these things together. All right, so all you have is your your um, your plastic layer. You gotta make sure you don't get two layers because it's really easy to pick up more than one. Then all you do is roll your tube kind of pretty tight, like that, tight and straight. And once your tube is rolled, I hold it kind of way up here at the top and then let my arm rest on where it's folded. Otherwise, it'll un uncurl. And then you have your part B, which is the sleeve. And all you do, shove it in there like that. And you hold it while it's going in so it doesn't unravel. You get it to the end, pull it out. And then just knock it on the table or any kind of surface. That straightens everything up. So then you're left with that, and that's your, your grow tube itself. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking two of these twist ties uh, because it holds the stake onto the grow tube a little bit better. We got some wind and some storms coming in tonight, so I wanna make sure that we're doing everything we can to prevent these things from blowing away. Not only that, but if they blow too much, they're gonna be damaging the, the new cutting in the ground. So I wanna make sure they're pretty good and tight. And I've also been using two stakes with each one of these grow tubes um, just to ensure that it doesn't blow away. And that's it. So use your twist ties, twist around at the, kind of the top and the, almost the middle here. And then all you're gonna do is insert your stake through these two twist ties on either side of the grow tube and that's it. It just sits over your cutting just like that. So that's it, the grow tubes are super simple. I would highly recommend these grow tubes because like I said, the, um, you get that good uh, blue light and then also they're super simple. They're not working with corrugated plastic or anything like that, trying to build a triangle or a square or anything. They're really fast, really easy. They're great for fruit trees, um, great for grapes obviously. Highly recommend these. I'll leave a link in the description below. You can check them out. I was walking out there and the cool thing was is that if you stick your hand in the top of the grow tube, it's almost probably, what would you say, Isaiah? Five to 10 degrees hotter inside the grow tube? Yeah. Probably five to 10 degrees hotter inside the grow tube. So it's acting like a little greenhouse basically, which is great for the plants in their infancy stages. We're gonna finish this up and then we'll go back out and we will um, finish out that row. So we got done planting our third row. I'm gonna start the fourth row, but before we do that, I wanted to share a little bit about why we're planting grapes on this side of the property. Obviously we're planting 250 of them, um, large amount of grapes, because we're gonna be doing some home, uh, kind of heritage winemaking, you might call it. I don't know if that's a thing, but that's what I'm calling it. Obviously it's gonna take some time because we directly put our cuttings in the ground and we didn't produce a root ahead of time. Um, we're looking at another one to two years extended grow time before we even get any fruit from these plants. So we're talking three, four years out at least before we even get production from these plants. One big thing that me and my wife wanted to do, we had a vision of, is sowing into the future. We were on vacation out in Colorado and we thought, man, what could we do on the property that is sowing into generations to come? And this is one thing we came up with. We wanted a vineyard on this side of the property that would add to the beauty of the homestead. And then also, we wanted to change this whole side of the property. So obviously, 
we've had our pigs over here for quite a while and as you can see our pigs are no longer here we took up the fencing now they are on the wooded side of the property that's an update for a later day uh, but now we just have our chickens over here so eventually what we're going to do is we have the vineyard that kind of stops right here at 250 plants. Depending on how this grow season goes, how many of these uh, cuttings take root, we might extend it on over just a bit further. And then in this back half of the property, we're gonna be planting an entire fruit tree uh, orchard. And we're gonna do pathways through it and all that good stuff. We really wanna turn this five acre homestead into a, a thing of beauty and also a kind of a micro ecosystem of if that's a word a micro ecosystem of all sorts of different things creation God's awesome beauty of what he's done in this earth right here is just on five acres so we obviously have the pond we have the greenhouse we have the raised bed garden we have the vineyard we're starting we have the arch uh, we have the orchard that we're gonna start in the coming months and then we have the wooded side of the property that's gonna be basically our, our animals, reserved for our animals. So anyway, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background information on why we are planting 250 crepe plants. Anyway, guys, that's gonna conclude this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope y'all learned something new. Hope you enjoyed us beginning the vineyard. Obviously, I'm gonna be updating you guys in the months and years to come on how this vineyard goes and all of the things we do over here how we're going to trellis it and how we're going to irrigate it and all that good stuff so stay tuned for all those videos if you're enjoying this journey go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already hit the notification bell next to it and hit all and you'll receive all of the notifications when we release our videos thanks again guys and we'll see you in the next video